Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming part two of my roasting my 2019 Sephora purchases. This video is inspired by Butte Bean here on YouTube. I will go ahead and link her channel down below if you guys haven't checked her out. She is just this like amazing pastel goth princess that I love watching. She is such a amazing creator here on the platform. She constantly uploads on all her socials and I just really, really enjoy her. So if you haven't checked her out yet, definitely do so. And without further blabbering, let's get into more things I bought from Sephora last year and what my thoughts are on them now. Okay guys, so part one, I'm gonna go ahead and link for you guys. That should be live already. So in that video, I covered all of my purchases from January through April. So I'm kind of splitting these up by a quarter just to make it like manageable because I made quite a few purchases from Sephora last year. So I have my handy dandy legal pad where I covered the first four months and now we're gonna cover the next four months. So starting off with May 1st of 2019, I made a Sephora purchase. So the first thing I bought is the Velour Lash Glue, which is $12. And I think I'd heard quite a few YouTubers talk about this product, which is what made me pick it up. And I really, really, really enjoyed that product. I love the fact that it's extremely sticky or like it just keeps your lashes put. And I ended up using that at a friend's wedding when I did her wedding makeup, which you guys, the pressure of doing wedding makeup is so intense, <laughs> especially when it's your friend and it's their big day. And this was also a destination wedding in Arizona and their wedding was in September and it was hot as freaking heck out there. So that was a really fun experience and I was so happy that that lash glue held her lashes in place and that was a personal win for me <laughs> um, on lash glue. So in case you guys are wondering about a good lash glue recommendation, that would be one of my top recommendations for you guys. So the next thing I bought was the Herbivore CBD oil, which is $58. You guys know I have dry skin, and so I'm always on the hunt for something that's gonna hydrate my skin. And I just thought the CBD oil looked really interesting. It's green, which is my favorite color. And I was curious about the brand. I'd heard some good things about it, so I was curious to try it out. And honestly, I'm still trying to work through that oil. It's not my favorite. I feel like it just sits on top of my skin, makes my skin really kind of oily, but it never like fully soaks in. And when I wake up the next day, it doesn't really feel like my skin's extra hydrated at all. So I was kind of disappointed to be very honest with you guys um, with that product and I don't plan on repurchasing it once I finish it up. The next thing I picked up from Sephora is the Milk Work It set. And this was a really fun way to try a few different products from Milk. So it contained a blush, a highlighter, um, the mascara, I think it was those three items. And I really enjoyed each of the products. I would love to try Milk's full-size stick products. I think they are gorgeous. I would love to purchase some of that in full-size, but I just know myself and I don't think I would ever get through an entire like blush stick like that. I prefer my cream products to be in compacts. So I feel like I learned that lesson in 2019 and I'm glad I was able to try their products for $25 and try a few different things, but I don't see myself going back to purchase anything from Milk Makeup anytime soon. And then I picked up the Viseart Petite Pro Soleil, which is $30. This was one of their fun little eyeshadow palettes that they came out with for spring, summer, I think. I think these were some of my purchases from the 2019 VIB sale because I think that ended the first couple of days in May. So these were like my last purchases, you know, to get that discount. So I have always loved Viseart's matte formula, but the shimmer formula, the few times I've tried it, I haven't really loved it. So I've been staying away from a lot of these mini palettes they've been coming out with. And so I tried the Petite Pro in Soleil and I really didn't like the formula. It is such a beautiful color story, but I didn't think the pigmentation was quite up to what I was expecting. So I actually ended up taking that palette back. Now I haven't bought a Viseart palette since then. And then they came out with that Shushu palette this spring. 
and it looked so beautiful and I waited and I hummed and I hawed and I finally purchased it a couple of days ago I think on Beautylish. So I'm very excited um, for when I get that palette. I'm hoping that I will fall in love with that particular palette because I hadn't given Viseart a shot in the last year and they've been coming out with so many of those cute little color stories. So, so you guys will have to stay tuned to see what my thoughts are on the Shushu palette if you guys are curious about that. On May 4th, I placed a Sephora order and I picked up the Tarte Babasu Found Sealer for $39. Now, I believe that foundation had just come out and everyone was reviewing it. And of course, everyone was loving it in their reviews. And I had kind of mentioned in a different video how much I love palm print. So of course, the packaging totally sucked me in. I was such a sucker. I totally picked up the found sealer and I'm trying to use it up now. It's actually sitting on my vanity so as you guys can see I've tried to use up some of it but I don't really like this foundation. I'm not really sure exactly what I don't like about it but I have it in the shade 44S Tan Sand and it's okay. I just don't Love it. I think it's patchy. I like to mix it so that it stays on for a long time, but usually after a couple of hours, it's pretty much gone, and I kind of regret buying it. I think, personally, my rule now is don't buy Tarte foundations because I haven't enjoyed a Tarte foundation in a really, really long time. So I just need to remember that and not purchase things because of the cute palm print. The next thing I purchased is a Beauty Blender set, and that was $45. Beauty Blender usually comes out with some deal type things during the VIB sale or around the holidays, so I usually like to stock up. Now this was before I tried the Shop Masse Pow Pow sponge, and honestly, after I tried that sponge, I haven't looked back, and I don't think I'd ever buy another Beauty Blender unless, you know, Shop Miss A went out of business or for some reason I wasn't able to get a hold of a Pow Pow sponge. The next thing I picked up is Charlotte Tilbury's Liquid Wonder Foundation in the shade 9 Dark which is $46 and 1.4 ounces. Now I had seen my friend rave about this foundation and I was so curious and I just can't get Charlotte Tilbury to work for me. I don't know why but her foundation shades just don't work with my skin tone and I've tried a few different foundations from her and I just haven't really enjoyed them. And then if I'm paying $46, I'm really expecting you to blow me away. So I, again, personal rule, won't typically buy Charlotte Tilbury foundations because I've just had such bad luck with them in the past and I like to learn from my mistakes. I don't usually like to continue to make them. so. Steering clear of that brand for the time being. So on May 6th, I bought the Dry Bar Clear Dry Shampoo for $23. Now, I have been on a journey with dry shampoo, and basically my conclusion has been that I don't really like dry shampoo. It works for like the first couple of hours, and then I feel like my hair is just greasier. It basically just doesn't really help prolong the length of time I can go without washing my hair. So... I've just given up on dry shampoo. I just wash my hair. I try to wash my hair just like once a week. And so I'll wear it down a couple of days, put in a ponytail, make it to the weekend, and that's when I wash my hair typically. So I don't try to wash it like every day or anything like that because my hair gets really, really greasy. So I, I like the idea of dry shampoo. I've just never found one that works for me. So I've stopped buying dry shampoo, again, as a personal rule because... I've tried high-end, I've tried drugstore, and nothing really works for me, so I'd rather save my coin and just wash my hair. I had mentioned the Natasha Denona Star Palette in a collab video I did with Amy Loves Makeup where I mentioned it as my least favorite palette from Natasha Denona. So it was one of those palettes where she hadn't come out with anything in a while, and the Sephora sale was ending, and I was like, oh, I might as well, while it's on sale, I might as well get it. And so I picked it up, and it's honestly really my least favorite palette from Natasha Denona. There's a lot of recurring beige shades and it's like a very cool tone palette. Just not really my vibe and I don't reach for it as much as I reach for her other palettes. 
and I personally wish I had just never bought it, but I have it in my collection, so I will probably use it a few more times and pass it on or try and maybe sell it on Poshmark. We'll see. I haven't really decided yet. I still keep it because someday I want to film a ranking my Natasha Denona palette video, so I need to get on that. It's on my list of things to do, hopefully this summer. On May 30th of 2019, the Huda Neon Obsession Palettes came out. They retail for $29 and she had three shades. I did film a first impressions video with those palettes when they arrived to me and that was it. I basically hated them and I wish I'd never bought them. So I ended up sending the green one back and I kept the pink and the orange thinking that maybe I could try them again and make them work and as per usual, as is on my channel, they kind of sat there and gathered dust and then it was too late to return them. So I still have them. I did pull out the pink one, I think, a few weeks ago and just tried it out because I was craving the Vizier Art Shushu palette and I thought those tones were definitely in my Huda palettes, but uh, I just didn't really love the formula and it very much worked like a pressed pigment. So. I've learned my lesson to be very cautious when I buy her mini palettes. June 2nd, I placed a Sephora order and I picked up the Dior Backstage Glow Face 02, which was $45. And I really, really like those little Dior highlighter palettes. Now, for a while in 2019 or 2018, I can't remember quite when, but everyone was raving about the Dior like single compact highlighters. And don't get me wrong, I'm a highlighter junkie, but it's so hard to keep buying the same shades from different brands. So I was so happy that Dior came out with smaller pans, but multiple highlights at a more affordable price point. And so I did end up picking up the second palette as well. I really like those highlighters. They definitely don't get enough use in my collection. But if you're, you know, feeling a little bougie and you want to try something a little more high-end, definitely would recommend those highlighting palettes. In that same order, I bought the Natasha Denona Sunrise palette. Now this was her first palette in that particular format. So she made smaller pans, basically just made a smaller palette and offered it at $65, which is a pretty affordable price point for Natasha Denona, even though for the average human being, that may seem like a quite a bit of money, and it is. I'm not gonna debate that with you guys, but yeah, it was just funny, because everyone's like, oh my god, it's so affordable, but really, it isn't. It's it's pretty high-end for um, an eyeshadow palette price point, um, but we all, I'm sure, justified it and ran towards that palette, because it was such a fun color story. It had a little bit of her sunset palette, but then it also had some fun berries, so it was a really cool palette and I like the fact that people got to try her formula and got more shades and got it at a better price which was really cool. On 6-6 I placed another Sephora order and picked up the Dominique Cosmetics Rustic Glam palette. Now I've always had kind of a hit or miss relationship with Dominique Cosmetics and I feel like most of you have too. So I really liked her first latte palette, then we bought the Berries and Cream palette which I don't really like. Then, what did she do after that? Was it Celestial Storm after that? I think it was. No. Then came Rustic Glam, I think, and I was like, mm, not really sure about it, and I bought it, and I really didn't like it. I filmed a first impressions video with that palette, and I think that was the only time I used it. I did end up sending it back because I just didn't like the formula of that particular palette. Oh, I forgot the lemonade palette. Do we need to talk about the lemonade palette? And so I feel like it's just back and forth with her. I just got the Latte 2 palette. A subscriber kindly sent that to me. And I've been enjoying that one. But I feel like it's, again, like Huda. It's like love, hate, love, hate. Because some of her palettes I think are really cool and fun. And then some I'm like, I'm not going to touch that with a 10-foot pole. So I remember when Celestial Storm came out, kind of for the holidays, I remember seeing Annette's video and then so many other videos that came out after that where a lot of people didn't really like those palettes. So now I'm like very cautious about Dominique Cosmetics because I could go out and buy it, but if I don't like it, I don't want to just keep buying the same thing and expecting a different outcome. You know what I mean? So that one did go back to store. 
And then I picked up on 611 the Donut Care Palette by Violet Voss. Now this was such a cute palette because it had such a fun little color story. I love that Violet Voss does these little palettes for 18 bucks. You can usually find them when you're like standing in line for checkout at Sephora. So I think it's such a smart move for them because they're well known for their eyeshadow formula and they do those kind of bigger palettes with a lot of shades. And I think even though the makeup lover in me is drawn to stuff like that, I think for the regular consumer that can be a little bit intimidating. So I like that they offer their formula at a lower price point in a smaller color story. And I think that's just the way to go um, if you're trying to get into like the Sephora market. And so it's a cute palette. Again, didn't really love it that much. I don't think the formula was what I'm used to with Violet Voss. So I ended up decluttering that palette for my collection. So on 7-12, after hearing Mel Thompson rave about the Tatcha Deep Cleanser, I did pick one up for myself as well. And I really like that cleanser. I did finish it up. And the only complaint I have with that particular product is the packaging really, really sucks. It's a very thick cleanser and it comes in a bottle, but it's like a squeezy bottle. And it's so hard to get product out of that thing. So I really hope that Tatcha does something and maybe updates the packaging and puts it in a pump. That would really help everyone out I think and I've mentioned that in a video I think I mentioned that in my empties and some of you did agree with me so if you're buying that cleanser be warned it is a bitch to get product out of there so that's my review on that and then I picked up the Mel Cosmetics Genesis blush which was such a beautiful blush oh my gosh it's like this peachy golden blush. I should bring it out for the summertime because it's such a beautiful color and I'm just very happy with Melt's cheek products to be very honest with you guys. And then I also picked up the Natasha Denona Mini Tropic Palette which I've honestly probably used like once or maybe zero times. I can't remember if I only swatched it or if I actually used it on my eyes but I was so attracted to that color story because it had like all my favorite colors from the Tropic palette. Beyond that, I wasn't really interested in the Tropic palette. Also, it was like $125 for that palette and it did not get good reviews. So I'm glad she did a mini just so we could have those fun colors in a $25 format. But yeah, I hardly use it. So I should probably work on that. <laughs> Okay, so we are on to the last month that I'm going to feature in this video. August 19th, I picked up the Pat McGrath Liquid Liner. I love my Pat McGrath Liquid Eyeliner. Funny story, I was picking this one up as a new one to use, but my original has not run out yet. I can still do a wonderful crispy wing with it, and so I haven't broken into this one that I purchased in October. In August of last year, it's still sitting in my backup drawer, so I'm a little bit shocked, and I'm like, what is going on with this eyeliner? Like, is somebody, like, punking me? Because it hasn't died yet, and so if you guys are on the hunt for a really good black liquid liner, I would totally recommend the Pat McGrath one. It it is spendy. I think it's $32, but that thing has lasted me for so long. It's insane. The next thing I picked up is the Melt Liquid Lip in Ginger and Golden for $19. I was so excited for these lippies, and then I tried the Melt Liquid Lipstick Formula, and I was not impressed. <laughs> they're too thin, and they're very drying, and... The shade Golden did not look as cute as I thought it was going to look on my skin tone, so I did end up returning those because I just couldn't justify keeping them for $19. I really did not like that formula, so personal rule for myself, I will not buy any liquid lipsticks from Melt anytime soon. I also picked up the Lunar Beauty Strawberry Dreams palette. Now, this palette is so stunning. It is on sale at Sephora right now. So if you've been contemplating picking it up, I would recommend it to you guys. A lot of you did request a eyeshadow look with it, so I'll try and get on it. I have a lot of new products that I want to feature on my channel as well, but I know a lot of you had requested that, so just know it is on my mind to do that, and I will try and hustle to get that up for you guys, but honestly, I did do a video with it in a like Sephora sale 
um, trying out like products I picked up during the Sephora sale video. So if you guys can go back and watch that and get an idea of my thoughts on the palette, that would probably get you through that product purchase decision making. Yeah, I really like that palette. I still reach for it and I'm so glad I own it. The next thing I picked up was the Fenty Pro Filter Hydrating Foundation. Everyone was so excited that she was coming out with a hydrating foundation, including myself, because I have really dry skin. I do like her matte foundation, though it works really well for me. Color match is perfection, and it stays on all day long, which is my favorite thing. Unfortunately, the hydrating one did not work for me. I didn't like it. It was patchy. It didn't stay on. I just didn't like it, and I feel like across the board, a lot of my YouTube friends have not really enjoyed that foundation. I've seen quite a few people declutter it. I know Amy Loves Makeup just decluttered it in a recent video as well, so maybe I'm not the only one. Maybe I'm not crazy. If you guys agree with me, let me know, because I was like thinking that was a foundation that everyone loved except me, but maybe not the case. Um, so it is not in my collection anymore, and I definitely won't be purchasing that again. The next thing I picked up was the ABH Loose Highlighter in Peach Fizz. I was so excited when I saw ABH was coming out with like a pinky golden highlighter. I picked that up right away and I love it so much. Again, I need to pull it out and use it. It's gonna be so perfect for spring and summertime. So I just really, really liked the color. I thought it was very unique. And again, I'm happy I picked that up. And that was also the same time I picked up the Anastasia Beverly Hills and Jackie Ina palette. Can you imagine that that palette came out in August of last year? I swear when it comes to makeup, like I cannot keep track of when things come out. In my mind, the Jackie Ina palette came out like a month ago, but it's been out for quite some time. And again, it was in so many people's 2019 favorites. It was like, many people's favorite palette of 2019. I really thought it was a beautiful palette. I have not used it enough in my collection. Such a beautiful palette. I think it's on sale, so if you have a chance to pick it up, please do. I know Mel Thompson said that she really wishes that they would make that palette permanent, and um, I don't know if they will, but I really enjoy it, and if you guys are on the fence, I would say grab it before it's gone because we don't want a repeat of the Makeup by Mario collab with AVH. Everyone's still looking for that palette and hoping it'll come back out again. And then the last thing I bought in that particular purchase was the Tatcha Silk Peony Melting Eye Cream. And I'm actually still using that. It's actually in my skincare drawer. Oh shoot, I actually moved it upstairs. So no, it is in my bathroom upstairs. I'm trying to use it. It's a very interesting eye cream. It's almost a, it's, well, it's definitely a bomb. So you don't need a lot of product. You kind of like rub your finger in it and it warms the product up and it gets on your finger and then you just apply a nice thin layer. Now it was a $60 eye cream and it's nice but I haven't seen any like life-changing results with it. So if you have like extra money, sure you should try it and you'll probably won't need a new eye cream for quite some while because it takes a really long time to make a dent in it but if you have other eye creams that work really well for you I would probably stick with what works for you because I haven't seen any incredible results with it to be very honest with you guys okay so on 821 I picked up the Laneige cream skin toner and moisturizer and let me tell you guys I am obsessed with that toner I used to be a diehard for the body shop toners I used to use them all the time then I picked up a few other ones to try out and see and then I tried the Laneige one and I am here it is sorry I have one in both of my areas where I do my skincare so I have one down here in my beauty room and then I keep one upstairs in my master bathroom I actually just ran out of the master bathroom one so I need to bring this upstairs but I did reorder that during the Sephora sale so I'm so glad I was able to save some money on it. If Laneige could just come out with this in like a milk jug size I would be so happy. It does not strip my skin. It's nice and hydrating and it cleans my skin and it just it just is so good and it's not overpriced which makes me so happy because I feel like so many toners and serums and skincare is so overpriced and I it just turns me off because I hate putting in a ton of money towards skincare and then not really seeing 
results right away. So I don't know, maybe that's just me being silly, but if I'm gonna spend an arm and a leg on skincare, I wanna see something happening on my skin, is my theory. So I love the Laneige. If you have dry skin, I would honestly recommend you checking it out. The next product I purchased on August 27th was the ABH Norvina 1, which were those big palettes that announced that Norvina was making her own brand or like a sub-brand of ABH and the internet just broke and people were pissed and it was a whole thing. It was a whole thing. I shouldn't have bought this ABH palette, but Sephora had an extra sale in August last year, which is why I bought so many things. And I was like, oh, I might as well get it on sale. So I did pick it up, but I did end up decluttering it because it was a bunch of purples. I didn't like the formula and I actually bought the other two as well. I don't know what month I purchased those in, so that might be in my next video where I'm roasting the last four months of the year's purchases, but ooh, I did not like those Norina palettes. And in that same order, I also picked up the Earth USA Nectar Oil just to have an oil to put in my hair because like I had mentioned, I have really greasy hair. And so typically that is indication of a really dry scalp. So I do try to put oil in it just to help combat the oiliness if that makes any sense to you guys. On age 28, I picked up the Pat McGrath IXC Mini Palettes for $28 in Subversive and Sublime. I didn't realize that those palettes were mini palettes from shades that were already in her collection, so when I bought them, I didn't realize that, and I basically just turned the package around and sent it back to Sephora because I didn't realize that it was repeat shades and I did need to keep those. Um, definitely not paying 28 bucks for shades that I already had in my collection, so I did end up sending those back. Um, and on 829, I bought the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Vanish Color Corrector for $32 in the shade medium. Now, I was really excited for these because she came out with some darker tones as well for darker skin tones, which was really exciting. But when I got the color corrector, I didn't like it. I thought it was very stiff and it was hard to get it on a brush and it didn't really do anything for my under eyes. I kind of want to go back and try the shade tan because I think I bought medium. Maybe I should have tried tan. Not really sure what happened there but I didn't like it and I ended up decluttering it. And then in that same day I also bought the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Longwear Foundation in the shade 9 warm for $44 and I like it but I didn't love it. It was one that it wasn't really as exciting as I was hoping it would be. So that was one that I purchased, but I ended up selling on Poshmark because I never really got any use out of it. So when I did my foundation declutter in December, I did end up getting rid of that particular foundation. So that is it for this video, guys. Oh my gosh. I feel like it's gonna be 100 years long because there were so many products to talk about. The end of 2019, was a little bit more stable so I didn't buy as many things and I will film that video soon so I hope you guys stick around subscribe to my channel and you'll be seeing that video soon thank you guys for watching I'll see you in the next one bye guys